Good morning. Welcome everyone to our Eucharistic celebration. In respect to the liturgy and those around you, please silence your phones at this time. Offertory baskets will be available at the designated exits for you to place your contributions. We ask that you pay close attention to the directions from our ushers as they will be your guides throughout the Mass, during Communion, and at the end of Mass. The flow of traffic at all Masses has been revised to maintain safe social distancing. You will receive Holy Communion only in your hand. The use of a personal hand sanitizer by parishioners before receiving the Holy Eucharist is highly recommended. Everyone attending Mass today is asked to join the communion procession by lining up for communion to receive the Holy Eucharist or a blessing from the priest. We ask that you only remove your mask when you are ready to consume the host and not before or while you are in line. Thank you for your patience and assistance. Please stand as we begin the celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. Welcome to this celebration of the Eucharist, in which we come to celebrate our own forgiveness. To be worthy to celebrate this mystery, let's come before God, plead for his mercy and pardon for our sin. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I've done and what I've failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Lord, have mercy. <coughs> Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And now together, let us give glory to God. Glory to God in the highest. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Let us pray. O 
Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel like working of your mercy, grant that we may serve you with all our heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Sirach. Wrath and anger are hateful things, yet the sinner hugs them tight. The vengeful will suffer the Lord's vengeance, for he remembers their sin in detail. Forgive your neighbor's injustice. Then, when you pray, your own sins will be forgiven. Could anyone nourish anger against another and expect healing from the Lord? Could anyone refuse mercy to another like himself? Can he seek pardon for his own sins? If one who is but flesh cherishes wrath, who will forgive his sins? Remember your last days. Set enmity aside. Remember death and decay and cease from sin. Think of the commandments. Hate not your neighbor. Remember the Most High's covenant and overlook faults. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, none of us lives for oneself and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For this is why Christ died and came to life that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. That is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the accounting, a debtor was brought before him who owed him a huge amount. Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold along with his wife, his children, and all his property in payment of the debt. At that, the servant fell down, did him homage, and said, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back in full. Moved with compassion, the master of that servant let him go and forgave him the loan. When that servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him and started to choke him, demanding, pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, be patient with me and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had the fellow servant put in prison until he paid back the debt. Now, when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed and went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, you wicked servant, I forgave you the entire debt because you begged me to. Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant, as I had pity on you? Then, in anger, his master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly Father do to you, unless each of you forgives your brother from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Today, from our first reading, we see the Lord instructing us to do a few things. But what comes out clearly, there are three major ones that come out to us very clearly. One is to seek peace and reconciliation, not discord or disharmony. To seek peace and reconciliation, not discord or disharmony. Then the other thing that comes out clearly is the need to forgive in order to be forgiven. Then if you could have gone a little bit further in the reading of that passage, the Lord instructs us not to hold grudges against one another, for grudges cause more sin and harm. That is from the first reading only. Now, if I were to make a homily from that, maybe we'll be leaving here tomorrow morning. It'll be very long. But today, let me ask you a question. Why do you come to church for mass? Is it because the church says you should come once in a week for mass? Or let me phrase it the other way. What do you come to do? <laughs> okay, that's food for thought. But for today, I want us to reflect on one thing. And this one thing is endless forgiveness. Endless 
forgiveness. And that's exactly what we come to do each and every time we meet for Mass. We come to celebrate endless forgiveness that the Lord has given to us. Endless forgiveness. That's what we come to celebrate, the mystery of our redemption. And that mystery of our redemption comes from the forgiveness the Lord gives to us. It's death on a cross, painful death, being nailed on the cross. Why? In order to give us forgiveness, to offer to us the grace of forgiveness. So every time we gather to celebrate Mass, to celebrate the Eucharist, we come to celebrate our own endless forgiveness given for free. Endless forgiveness. Endless forgiveness. You may forget everything, but don't forget that one when you leave. Endless forgiveness. And this endless forgiveness leads us into eternity, into eternal life, for those who believe in it. So for us today, as we celebrate our endless forgiveness offered to us for free by Christ dying on the cross, we come also to witness the power of love. Love conquering sin. The power of love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son who dies on the cross that whoever believes in him shall have life eternal. The power of love. That somebody can love unto death. The power of love conquering sin. That's what we come to witness that we are so loved by him who forgives us that he dies for our sins. Point number one. <laughs> Point number one. Forgiveness is work. Forgiveness is work. It's not easy. To forgive somebody who has messed you up. It's not easy to forgive somebody who has messed up your career. It's not easy to forgive somebody who has messed up your marriage. It's not easy to forgive somebody who has messed up your children. It's not easy to forgive somebody who has messed up your husband or your wife, for that matter. It's not easy to forgive somebody who has messed up your personal life. It calls for work. You work at forgiving. It does not just come like that. It's not instant coffee. It is real work. You must work at forgiveness constantly. That's point number. Hello? Oh, no. Number? Forgiveness calls for work. Work at forgiving. Point number two. Forgiveness comes with pain. Forgiveness comes with pain. For the one giving forgiveness and the one receiving forgiveness. Look at the story in the gospel today. This man goes to the master to plead for mercy, to plead forgiveness, that his debt may be cancelled out. That is self-humiliation. Pleading, begging, showing helplessness, powerlessness, showing uselessness before the master to beg for forgiveness. That's a lot of pain. Most of us are very proud of who we are. For us to beg, to show our uselessness, to self-humiliate, to plead for mercy, to plead for forgiveness, it is painful. It's not easy to walk to a prison and say, okay, I committed this one as if you receive it. No. It is painful for the one seeking forgiveness.
it is also painful for the one giving forgiveness. Forgiveness comes with pain. Are we willing to bear the pain to forgive and to be forgiven? Are we willing to show our uselessness, helplessness, powerlessness, humiliate ourselves for the sake of the mercy and the great glory that we shall receive at our resurrection? Are we willing to go through pain in forgiving? When I was a small boy, for us, we used to walk to school. We were never driven to school. And in our schools, we used to put on black shoes. And my brother had the same size of shoes as myself. And of course, when the parents know you have the same size, they just go to the same shop and just pick the shoes for you and for you. They look alike. So one day, my shoes were dirty. And for us, nobody cleans the shoes for you. You do it yourself. So they were dirty, and I looked at them. In the morning, my brother was still uh, preparing himself. I took his shoes, which were clean. <laughs> and put them on and went to school. My brother came and found this. No, my shoes were not dirty. Just walked in, put on the shoes because he cannot go to school without shoes anyway. So he put on the, school, uh, the shoes, went to school, and after arriving to school, of course, for us, we used to be punished. He was punished for dirty shoes because the shoes were not clean. Why did you not clean your shoes? And we used to be... And that's enough punishment with some stick. You just, and then for you, you could have taken the parent or the teacher to court to sue. For us, that's the way of bringing them up. It's like, bring your hand. You did not clean your shoes. Go to class. So he got punished for my sake. Before, as we, then we went for games. Uh, we used to play soccer and... I played soccer using the same shoes, and the shoes got torn. So first, stealing, the shoes is torn. How will I tell him that the shoes that are torn belong to him? So I had to, I behaved, deep down I was dying for, I was dying for the sins that I had committed, and I was dying to be forgiven. I was dying to to find a way to tell him and that he may find a way deep down in his heart to forgive me. My heart was pleading to be forgiven. I knew what I had done, but I was behaving as if everything is okay, but deep down I was dying for it. Even us today, sometimes we make something, we make some mistakes, we commit some sins, deep down we are suffering. We may behave as if everything is normal, but deep down we are suffering. We are pleading for mercy, but we don't know how to... But to bring yourself to that part of going to your brother and your friend and your workmate and your boss and say, I'm sorry, it, it is painful. Hello? Who finds it very easy? And it's even more painful when you go to your brother and say, my brother, this was your shoes, and he does not say, when you say, please forgive me, he does not say, you are forgiven or I forgive you. Just say, okay. What do you make of that? You get even more suffering. You go to your neighbor and you say, sorry, I'm the one who messed up yesterday. And your neighbor looks at you and walks back to the house. You get more suffering. It is a painful process. So sometimes we have to go through this pain to receive that forgiveness from God and from one another. I was explaining point number. <laughs> point number two. Point number three. There is a tendency with human beings to minimize or to minimalize individual sin while magnifying somebody else's sin. 
Hello? That I look at my sin, I look at, it's a bit less. I'm not like that rapist over there. I'm not like that murderer over there. I'm not like a child smuggler out there. Minimizing my sin while magnifying somebody else's sin. The moment we start doing that, that's the moment we lose the value of our own forgiveness. That is a moment where the devil wants to keep us continuously in the chain of sin. That it makes you realize that, no, my sin is not as bad as my neighbor because he comes with different women every other evening. At least I'm faithful to my husband. But you are gossiping yesterday. Hello? Minimizing or minimalizing our own sin while magnifying somebody else's sin keeps us continuously sinning, keeps us in the continuous chain of sin. Look at this man. When he went to the boss, he said, okay, forgive me my debt. After he's forgiven, instead of going out and forgiving, he minimized his sin, his debt, that he has been forgiven. When he meets with his co-worker, he makes sure he is put into prison until he pays. Because he had minimized or minimalized his sin and magnified his workmate or his slave, his fellow servant, he does not forgive. He puts him in jail. He puts him in prison until he pays. And this is where we are today. We are ready to see somebody else's sin rather than deal with our own sin. A rapist, a murderer, a thief, a gossiper, all have committed one thing, which has only three letters, which is, which is S-I-N. S-I-N. Fight that devil who tries to make you minimize your own sin while magnifying somebody else's sin because he wants to keep you in the chain of sin. One to the next, to the next, to the next. Because they are just small, then you continue going and going and going and going. Fight that devil who makes you minimize your own sin while magnifying somebody else's sin. That's point number. How many do you want today? <laughs> point number four. Forgiveness does not guarantee change of heart. Forgiveness does not guarantee change of heart. This guy had been forgiven. His head has not changed. It was as hard as a stone. When he meets the fellow servant, puts him to prison. Change of heart is a personal initiative with the help of the grace of God. Change of heart is a personal initiative with the help of the grace of God. We must work at it, at changing of heart. If you know I cause you to commit sin, you better deal with that fact. And say, if I meet Father Danny every week, I'll be committing 20 sins. So therefore, what do I do? Should I tell him? Should I avoid seeing him? Find a way of working it out. That's point number four. Forgiveness does not guarantee change of heart. 
Change of heart is a personal initiative with the help of the grace of God. Work at it. It does not come easy. God is inviting us to have a change of heart. So that we can become channels of endless forgiveness. Point number five. Our past sinfulness ought to be a step. Our past sinfulness ought to be a step of grace to eternity. Our past sinfulness ought to be a step towards eternity, the grace of eternity. Why do I say so? When we look back on our sinful past and we have been forgiven by God and we know we have asked for God's forgiveness and he has granted that forgiveness, we should always, when we look back, give thanks to God for who we are today rather than who we were before, sinful sinners. That who I was, Lord, I thank you for the grace you have given me. Lead me continuously to eternal life. Give me more courage to forgive and to be forgiven. Give me the grace to be right with you. When we look back at our sinful past, which is forgiven, we have to thank God and ask for the grace of God to continue guiding us continuously into eternal life. Not look back and say, I was 21 and I messed up so and so. But if you have been forgiven, you ask for forgiveness for what you did, look back and thank God for who you are today, a forgiven son and daughter of God. Ask for the grace to continue receiving forgiveness and giving forgiveness until eternity. Now, final exam. Hello? Endless? Endless? Pray that you become a channel of endless forgiveness. Endless forgiveness. But don't forget, forgiveness is? Forgiveness is? Forgiveness comes with? Forgiveness does not presume change of heart. Change of heart is personal initiative with the help of the grace of God. Don't forget there is a danger of minimizing or minimalizing our sin while magnifying somebody else's. Fight that small devil. that makes you look at your sin as if it's, it's easy to work with, but so-and-so is, is even worse than me. Uh-oh, deal with that one first, then now you can deal with the other one. Hello? Channels of endless forgiveness. That is what we celebrate here. Endless forgiveness to eternity. I pray that always when you look back at your past, when the devil brings those bad memories about your past sinful life that is forgiven, turn to him and say, thank you for reminding me, for our Lord has given me endless forgiveness, and I claim that forgiveness, and I'm not the one I was then, I'm the one I am now, and I thank God for that grace, and in his resurrection, I should be with him.
to glorify the God, the Father Almighty. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, co-substantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified and appointed his pilot, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and he seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceed from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. The Lord is kind and merciful, and so we offer our petitions to God, seeking a response of kindness and mercy. For the Church, that we who are God's people, both in life and in death, may faithfully mediate God's love, mercy, and forgiveness through our words and deeds, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace to forgive those who have wronged us, and for those who believe that they cannot be forgiven, that God will free our hearts so that we come to know his unconditional and eternal promise of mercy and forgiveness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have been impacted by hurricanes and wildfires, that God will give them strength and speed the assistance they need and for firefighters and relief workers, that God will keep them safe in their service and sustain their families and loved ones, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our grandparents, living and deceased, in thanksgiving for all the blessings that we have received from them and for the prominent role they have played in many of our lives, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are suffering, that God will heal the sick, bring comfort to those who are isolated, give strength to those fleeing violence, and hope to those seeking jobs, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have, been, who have asked for our prayers, for those whose names are written in our prayer request books, and for those who have died this week, Rosa Martinez, Georgina Aguilar Sanchez, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the special intentions for this Mass, Mark Bradley and Manuel Villas. And for all the prayers that we hold dear in the silence of our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the intentions of those following us online and worshiping with us, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful God, a sinful people turn to you as the ultimate source of justice and mercy. Hear our cries and listen to the prayers we make in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May, may the Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for, for the, the praise, praise and glory of his name. Through the Lord, Lord, his holy church. Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve for the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. <laughs> it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering, cancelled out our sins, and by rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with a company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Sana in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Sana in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work so that the human race may become holy just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray, upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though once we were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love, for your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death, and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the hood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, said a blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord,
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim, who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with the friends of our Pope, Gustav, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among saints, in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, our spouse, Blessed Apostles, and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then freed at last from the hood of, the corru the hood of corruption, and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And now let us pray with the Father in the words of our Savior taught us, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, allowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptations. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who say to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we, called the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say a word, and my soul shall be healed. The body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. For those unable to receive our, our, uh, the body of Christ, just fold your hands on your chest and you shall receive a blessing. And you come out that way. For those who are sitting in here, you come out to the sides. Keep on the masks and keep smiling behind those masks.
And for those of us unable to receive the body of Christ, let us make a spiritual communion with them, with our Lord. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. 
May the working of this heavenly gift, O oh Lord, we pray. Let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies so that its effects and not our own desires may always prevail in us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now let us pray to our Lord together with our mother for this pandemic. <clears throat> Our Lady of Guadalupe, in these times of tribulation, we turn to you, O Mother, see with compassion the suffering of your beloved sons and daughters affected by the coronavirus pandemic throughout the entire world. Ask your son to have mercy on us, bringing healing to those infected and protection to all your children. Jesus Christ, Savior of all people, grant us courage to accompany and to care for the entire world in the wake of sorrow and uncertainty. We seek refuge in you, and according to your promise, deliver us from this danger. Amen. St. Anthony of Padua. Now you may be seated for a few announcements, and thank you for that silence. <laughs> Collection baskets for you to place your contribution will be located at all exits of the church. The second collection this weekend is for the maintenance fund. Your contribution allows, allow, allows us to maintain the facilities and cover urgent repairs as they arise. Thank you for your generosity. The Young Adult Ministry invites all young adults beginning college for the first time this fall to part two of the new student virtual retreat, all the places you'll go, to be held on Sunday, September the 20th, from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. The retreat is a two-hour Zoom program offering prayer, reflection, and faith sharing, and will feature guest presenters, Father Eric, Father Danny, Wayne E. Romo, former campus ministers, uh, Sister Imelda Pellan, a young adult ministry coordinator, and two recent graduates of college, 
Cassandra Cantu and Joshua Romo, registered for part of the retreat by Thursday, September the 17th, by calling the parish office at extension 110. Our oldies but goodies ministry would like to extend warm wishes for a happy Grandparents Day. We invite all of you to join us uh, today in celebrating some of our talented seniors for our annual St. Luke's God Talent Seniors Adult Talent Show. We will be posting their videos to our Facebook page today and to the St. Luke uh, School YouTube account. We also are invite, uh, invite all grandparents to join us on Monday, September the 14th for our honorary grandparents drive through parade from 12.30 to 1.30 p.m. in front of the parish center. Please follow the ushers exiting instructions. Each section will be exiting by pew and in a specific direction to allow for social distancing and easier exit. Now, at this point, I want to invite all parishioners and visitors to please stand to recognize those visiting. The new parisher, parishioners or all visitors that we may have today to be recognized. Somebody coming out of a St. Luke's community, either out of town or from San Antonio, but from a different parish. Nobody at this point. Now we invite all celebrating anniversary or birthday to stand to stand for a special blessing. Is that a birthday or anniversary? Birthday, okay. Very nice. Very nice. Another birthday or anniversary? Okay, birthday. another one. Birthday. Let us extend our hands and ask for God's blessing upon them. <clears throat> Loving God, you created all people of the world, and you know each of us by name. We thank you for our brothers and sisters who celebrate their birthday today. Bless them with your love and friendship, that they may grow in wisdom, knowledge, and grace. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Those who are grandparents, do we have any of grandparents here? Okay, upstanding. Wow, very nice. Oh, It is good to be a grandparent because that's the time to tell them, no, come on this way. <laughs> Let us extend our hands for a blessing upon them. God of ages, we praise and thank you from generation to generation. You have been our refuge and strength. We give you thanks for grandparents and we pray for them. We give you thanks for they connect us with our heritage and our roots through the mists of time. We give thanks for their Christian memory, which inspires and enlightens us. We give thanks for the example of their faith, for the witness of their lives, for the constancy of their love, for the support of their prayers. Bless all grandparents and keep them in your care. Reward, reward them for their faith and fidelity for their work and goodness, for their love and thoughtfulness, for their gifts and prayers. Give them a long and happy life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Be channels of endless forgiveness. The Lord be with you. 
May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.